Again, I'm Andy Stewart, our Chester Treasurer. This is Vicki Caramonte. We work together. She's in my office. Um, Jamie and Greg here are from the um, Parks and Trails in New York. And the basic background, as you probably gathered if you look at the email, so I think, is that we got a grant for consultants who know a lot about helping communities develop, improve, inventory, and otherwise understand a plan for bicycling safe well. And it's an exciting project because there's so many benefits to improving bicycle safety. You know, traffic calming, safety for bicyclists and pedestrians and motorists, because God forbid you hit a guy on a bicycle, you know, everybody, the guy on the bicycle is the worse off, but everybody is involved in this terrible thing. So we want to try to improve that. We want to try to improve the amount of children and families who are feeling safer and willing to use their bikes. Um, we want to try to take care of um, regular kind of long distance and serious bikers. We want to find out who's out there, who's biking, where the areas of interest are for improvements. Um, and we're going to work, we had we a meeting this afternoon, which is different from this one because it was, it was people who were um, employed in one way or another within town government or county or state. Um, and then and we have very good involvement from our highway department, our police department, our parks department, county parks department. Um, we had a representative from the Town Planning Department. Who else do we have, Vicki, it was good? Someone from NIMTIC, which is a state transportation Regional agency. planning group. And they control money for <coughs> improvements. Rockland um, Parks and Planning, Rockland Health. Yeah, Department of Health, which does a lot of work kind of supporting yeah, recreational activity and stuff. It was a good crew. I thought this thing's real. This is not BS, basically. And, and, um, and these guys have some great skills and ability to collect data and kind of guide us in our process. And so I'm excited to welcome people here. We have a process that's, I actually didn't realize you were taping this. We can edit that part out. <laughs> the, um, where we want to go through a kind of a community involvement process, collect data, they're going to inventory streets, we're going to make recommendations, um, and things are going to come out that are relatively low cost but effective for improving bicycle safety and connection between trails, sidewalks, roads, destinations for uh, things that we could incorporate into our paving schedule as far as striping, signage, uh, tra traffic calming, uh, maybe even a bike lane somewhere where we don't have one already. So that's the basic setup. Um, I give you our wonderful hired hands here um, who have a dense agenda to hand out. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, it's make a, it quick. It's, and, and, and we're going to wrap up, I'd say, within an hour. Yes. Yeah, uh, and invite you to continue participating um, and, and, and help us out any way you can. All right? Because we're trying to help you out. So thank you for having us. We're, uh, so my name is Jamie. This is Greg. And we're from uh, Parks and Trails New York. We're a statewide nonprofit organization. We've been doing a lot of uh, work with multi-use trails, parks, state parks, and other parks around the state. Um, really trying to build a network of parks, greenways, trails across the state of New York. And we've been doing that for um, over 30 years. Um, our, we really kind of had a focus on multi-use trails for, for quite a long time, but as kind of times have shifted and more trails have been built, our um, kind of agenda has also grown to include complete streets and um, you know community cycling networks. And so that's why this project, we're really happy to do it um, because it, it has both of those components. It's got a trail network, it has a city street network, and then you have the added benefit of a lot of uh, kind of recreational cycling that kind of makes things interesting to have all those things working together. So, um, so today we just we would like to go through kind of the, the bones of the plan, show you a couple of the um, kind of outreach tools that we have to try to get community input for the plan. Does everybody have a copy of the agenda? For tonight. We'll pass okay, sorry. around. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. I want to make sure. Sometimes, you know, we have these meetings and everything. Did you get a copy? Yeah, I got one. All right. Does everybody else have one? Good. Good. All right. Um, so, uh, also, also, I want to sure. take a moment for people to introduce themselves to. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, can we just do that real quick? Because I'm just kind of curious. Name where you live within the town or nearby, any affiliation that's relevant, basically, for this. Sure, I'm Steve Brell, and I actually live in 
New City. Ah, Park All right. Well, you had your plan here today. Uh, I came because we got an invitation for the uh, Rockwood Bicycling Club, so I wanted to come and see if I could contribute anyway. Thank you. Uh, I'm Paul Caden. I live in Piermont. I live right on the Esposito Trail. Um, and I'm what you would call an enthusiast rider, but interested in helping just all the things you said that make it more comfortable for more people to use the bike. Do we have a sign issue? Mm -hmm. It's going around. Uh, it's in a way. Spark Hill. I'm just a ride with a I'm on vacation. If you want to see what, what's going to happen. Are you right on the rail trail too? Yes. Yeah. And over here? Yeah. My name is Mark Soloff. I live in Valley Cottage and I'm a board member of the Bicycle Touring Club of North Jersey. I'm uh, Dave Zornow. I, um, I'm also a member of the, both the BTC and J and the Rockland Bike Club, and I lead a, a Saturday ride in Nyack called Bike Nyack. And I'm also a uh, publisher of Nyack News and Views and working um, uh, also the chairperson of the Nyack Transportation Alternative Program, which is creating a bike lane path that's going to hook up the Esposito Trail and the South. Peter Titus, Chestnut Ridge, a uh, long time local bike rider. Okay. Larry Vale, I'm in Tepan. I, I, I think I may have been downgraded from enthusiast to recreation, but I, <laughs> I enjoy bicycles. Um, and uh, I live pretty close to the existing Archtown Trail that we uh, were talking about. And behind you, I think it's Stephen Moon. I'm a local resident. Uh, but I'm a highway department employee administration. Amy Field, I um, am personally a jogger, but I'm thrilled for the bicyclists to come through. I would love for there to be bike paths and jogging paths for everyone. I happen to live on Falling Mountain Road, and I would absolutely love for it to be easier for everyone um, to not worry about dying. I don't want to kill which is why I jog. I try to bite that once. <laughs> I'm Rita Jo Ackham. I live either far, even farther afield. Well, no, just a ridge. I'm in Spring Valley, the other end, the north end of Spring Valley. And I'm also part of the Rockland Bicycling Club. And uh, while I don't ride, the caliber and, and difficulty that uh, a lot of these people do. Uh, I definitely want to see improvements and accommodations, he maybe says, for all the users. I right. just really need them. And we appreciate that our town is taking the lead. Well, I don't feel like I appreciate it. we have a wonderful town, and, and, and it's nice to get appreciated. But I don't really think that in many ways we're kind of behind, just because it's mostly. The bicycle demand is kind of growing. There's some free market shops, cafes, and the bike shops. Um, but our planning process is as good as it should be. So and we just need to start collecting data and kind of driving that planning process. So thank you all for being here and helping out. We just did a real quick introduction. If you want to say hello. Yeah, to my name is from Upper Niagara. Ride a bike much? Uh, yeah. okay. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, back to you. So um, just the context that we were talking about was the shared use path going in on the Tappan Zee Bridge. So it's a big deal for biking in the region, for, for the town, also for Nyack, South Nyack, that are really directly affected by the connection to the bridge. So they have their uh, planning study that's going to be specifically geared toward those two villages. Uh, the town's planning study will coordinate with those, but it's, they are two separate things. Um, so I told you a little bit about PTNY. Um, just quickly, the goals of the bike study, um, and these were pretty much set out by the town of Orangetown when they put out their uh, request for proposals. Uh, but really, it's to engage the community in creating a vision for the biking network uh, throughout the town. It's to understand the diverse uses of the network. So that means both the people coming across the George Washington Bridge, up the river here, and then go, they're going to go across the uh, Tappan Zee Bridge eventually but also families, people that want to go to school, 
people that might want to take their bike to the uh, train station, the New Jersey Transit Station. Um, basically, the whole gamut of the, the whole spectrum of the community. Um, and then also how people's perceptions maybe of certain riders or the other group might affect how they view the network. Uh, we want to kind of we want to gauge that and then try to use that to as we design our, our facilities and suggest uh, programming or treatments. Um, as far as facilities, we do want to propose facilities, treatments, and routings that maximize safety and accessibility. Uh, and we are going by uh, it's called the NACTO guidelines. So this is, I guess, a we call it a progressive. Um, they have lots of lots of new ideas in here that it's not just build a 10-foot side path or do nothing. There's lots of a variety of for different kinds of roads and, and systems that you build. It's not just A or B. So this is a really good resource for us and it's something that we're glad that we have this as opposed to what might have been around 10 or 15 years ago. And it's it's available for free online um, in a PDF version and, uh, through what, the website nacto.org, N-A-C-T-O.org. So it's totally accessible to the, to the public. It doesn't require an engineering degree to use, which is a big plus. Um, and then finally, you know, part of the plan is also to recommend ways that the town can evaluate the network going forward and take feedback from community members. So that includes we're we're doing a, we're helping the town set up the first bike count uh, actually next week, where we have some information on the front table here. But the idea is to do counts and other evaluation and feedback from residents moving forward uh, to try to keep the network evolving and growing. Um, so I guess as part of the process, this is you know a planning process. So. Um, the stages kind of are you review what's on the ground, the existing conditions, and you get feedback to inform your analysis, and then you do the analysis and produce the plan. So um, as part of that existing conditions review, uh, we're doing a couple things. We're doing site visits. We did one of them today where we drove, uh, uh, we were here pretty early, and we, we drove a lot. We probably drove 60 or 70 miles back and forth on city roads, um, east, west, north, south, just trying to get a feel for what the roads look like, the width, the how many lanes, the pavement quality, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, on the back end, we're doing some mapping. There's some example maps here. These are all in draft format, but they show that we do have some data that when combined with what we see on the roads, we should be able to, to actually think of the type of facilities we need for a specific roadway. Um, and then I mentioned the counts. That's a big piece of it is getting the data, hard data. So the counts will help us. We also have access to data from those recreational riders that ride on the weekends. There are, there are existing counts on George Washington Bridge and other places along this kind of well-traveled recreational route that we can use. Um, and then uh, we have a whole, we had a meeting earlier, a kickoff meeting with kind of institutional partners, the county, other, other agencies, uh, planning agencies that all have data that we're going to reach out to and have meetings, phone calls, or just ask them to give us their data, their thoughts on some of our, uh, our work products. So that's kind of the, that's the first part of it is, is getting, getting a sense of what's on the ground and then getting to the data. Um, and then the next part is kind of our engagement or outreach. And Greg's going to go over that yeah. part. So as a grassroots nonprofit, uh, or as a nonprofit with roots in the grassroots, we have a, a pretty solid um, community engagement plan that we've been um, using in other communities throughout the state over the past 30 years. And, and as social media has been introduced, it's kind of opened up more opportunities to kind of engage with residents and, and figure out um, kind of the pulse of the community. And so one of the ways we'll be doing um, community engagement is through uh, Orange Town social media pages. Um, you know, feel free to share stuff that, that they post that's related to the plan. We'll be seeking um, comment and uh, responses to surveys, short survey questions um, through Twitter, through Facebook. Um, I'm not sure if there's an Instagram account or other social media accounts, but there's there's a, there's so many different ways that social media has made it easier for for you know us to engage with with the community. Um, and then another thing we'll be doing is we'll have paper surveys that will have um, several questions. I think we brought copies of, um, we're currently working on a plan in the city of Troy, um, a similar plan, um, the city of Troy, which is just across the Hudson River from Albany. This is um, an example if anyone wants to take a look at it. And, uh, and we're, we're basically, we're using a lot of the same techniques um, that we've been using in Troy that's worked out well, and hopefully will be the workout just as well in Orangetown. And so one of the things we did 
um, was we did a community survey. We had it um, distributed throughout the community by with uh, from our partners at events. Um, so by all means, if you have events that you're that you're coordinating or that you'll be participating in, and you want copies of the survey, we'll be producing those surveys soon. Um, and so we'll some we'll have them available. I think on the website or through through other ways. Um, we'll also be doing short surveys. Just briefly, when do you want the survey to be returned? Um, well, I think the timeline for the plan is it's still probably over the next month and a half. Yeah, I'd say uh, yeah. Stuff in phase. probably before the holiday, you know, the end of the year. Um, so the survey that's getting passed around is kind of an example, like I said, of the survey that we're doing um, right now. And and so there are questions on there that that might be more um, relevant to Troy that aren't necessarily as relevant to Orangetown. But there's definitely things in there that that we think have given us some pretty valuable information. Um, so we're working on the survey, and then we'll also have short, short questions that we'll be posting um, through, the, through the social media. Um, and then one of the, the more interesting things that we're doing is we've created this online um, feedback map that we'll be, re we'll be releasing um, on the Orange Time website um, fairly soon. It's basically ready to go. We used it today, actually. And it's, it's optimized, um, so it's kind of like an app. Um, it's, it's not available in the App Store, but you can easily get to it on your smartphone. Um, there's a way that you can put it as a shortcut on your phone, which will have information on the website um, for you to do that pretty easily. But it uses the location of your device, where you are. Um, it allows you to um, basically post, while you're standing there, um, the issue or the idea that you have. So, um, for example, so this is Clouds on Mountain Road this morning. <laughs> um, yeah. So what, what it allows us to do, and, and you all to do as well, is to go out, um, if you're out on a ride or if you're out on a walk or if you're just, you think of something, um, it allows you to, to go to this map and you can, you can manually select the location or you can use the GPS function and it'll find your location um, and you can post, um, it's pretty easy, you just post a comment um, you describe the location, so if it's at an intersection, you just list the intersection. Um, if it's at a specific address, you can list that, or if it's at a landmark, you can list that. Um, and then there's different types of, of observations, so for instance, if signage needs to be um, added to that location or it's in bad shape, um, you, can, you can just click on one of those, and then um, just in a sentence or two, you can just you know, type out what it exactly is that you'd like to give us feedback on. So if there's, you know, if, there, if you think that there should be a, you know, a left turn lane for bicyclists or something um, at a specific intersection, um, you can just post that. And then um, you can put your name and your contact information so we can follow up with you. Um, that stuff's not required, but it is helpful because, you know, sometimes um, this information, there's so much information that, that we might need to follow up. And you can also add a picture pretty easily from your phone, like you can take a picture um, directly from your phone while you're there and post that and so um, and then just you click on report it and you know in under a minute you have a you basically provide us with some suggestions but just to be clear the the it's a it's a data set that's going to the town or consultants so it's not like a Facebook or some other posting where you're, you're kind of creating this online dialogue around the pot it's not being monitored for immediate response <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and I think you should just make the email or contact info required. I mean, the, yeah. Anybody who's doing it wants to. They want that be, call back. Yeah. You know, they, 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 we don't. Yeah, I think that's that's a good that's yeah. that's something we can we can definitely do is make that that required so we can follow up. But um, you know, and, and feel free to to be as specific as as you need to because. Um, you know, like Jamie mentioned, today was really our first day on the ground in Orangetown, so we're still kind of learning um, a lot about the town, and, and there's definitely a lot of different, you know, places and uh, different parks, different um, schools and the areas around the schools, so um, it's, it's definitely, you know, helpful for, for the residents who know the town better than we do to give us some, some feedback. The other thing, it doesn't have to be negative either, like that, it's a great place to ride, you know. That actually helps us when we make the plan because we can include nice pictures and nice sentiment about people's enthusiasm for riding or for the town. That, that would be really nice. Is there an expectation that in the final report there will be some sort of 
know, like a pie di chart diary. Kind of, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can definitely take the data and you know make infographics from it, or we can even um, include the raw data so people you know can read all the comments. Because I think at some point on the website, sort of the results of the study, we can say you know like eighty five percent of people said the rail trail section in Spark Hill was a great place to ride, or you know that was a lot of the right. feedback. There was some something like that. Same thing with the survey. You know, mm -hmm. we definitely crushed the numbers in the survey, and then even like. We, we, this is an example. We did a quick poll for Troy. This is just one question thing where you hand it out at an event or you put it on Twitter or something. What improvements would you mo would it most influence you to walk or bike in Orangetown? And it says better signage, wayfinding, yada yada. And then we run it for two days and then we post the results. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll have snippets of those things in the report. Um, so yeah, we, any good feedback is will be demonstrated. So, so just one question. Um, you know, I imagine that. People in this room probably have thought about a few of these things and probably don't need to go to the spot and take a photo of it. <laughs> yeah. But um, do you prefer to use this for just comments in general? I mean, it's a good excuse for me to ride my bike there and, and take a picture of it. But yeah, I could know, also do it in some other format, just you know, sitting at home. No, I mean we have so we, we have a range of things. We have the quick polls we'll do, then we have the survey if you want to sit and do it at home, and then that is either you go to the spot and do it, or you can. You can type the address right in there, or okay. put the spot right on the map. All right. So but, but you, you can do it from home. You like aggregating it in this tool, though. Yes. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? No, the no. survey. Anyway, we, we, we want to get okay. hundreds of, you know, okay. we want to get feedback coming in on all different places. Okay. So. But I think I think what this does is kind of it doesn't necessarily replace the idea of putting dots on a map like that. You know, that you typically would always do at a planning meeting. Um, it's a little bit more descriptive and it, it's crowdsourced, so you know. Um, it doesn't require you to necessarily attend a meeting to do it. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely helpful and, and really it might show that there's, that there's you know, a couple areas in the town where you know, at, there's 25 people that, that have, the sim, have the same idea or that really like a certain area or really like, uh, would like to see the same improvement. You know, maybe the train station needs more bike parking and you know, 20 people say that. Yeah, um, Greg, we should, this does have also, you can agree with someone which is like liking it, they're what they said. Okay. Or you can actually you can add another you can add a comment like at the same place. So you can you can repeat the you know the, the person's all right so when you're using that you can see other people's comments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that's is that why you were thinking of making it anonymous? Um I still think people should just stand we up. We have the ability to review the comments and get rid of okay. or at least make private the right. inappropriate ones. <laughs> if that's the <clears throat> So well, we can play around. Like we, we should we should talk and yeah, make sure we handle that. Concerned about yeah, we don't get distracted. Yeah, right. But then, but but Larry, you know, like you, you, know, you might know your particular area, Spark Hill, better than other places, and certainly other people. You can sit down at your desk, plug down five or six comments on this map, and, okay. and you don't need yeah. to ride around. Right. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, on the map. Yeah. Cool. If you take a picture, if you go around and take pictures of these spots before, you can kind of do it all at once, <clears> or you can do it on the fly when you're right. driving. And like, yeah, you don't have to put a picture. You, anything is good. Anything is fine. Um, the other, you know, the cynical, you know, if I'm a neighborhood community and I want my bike lane to be on my street, I would tell 50 of my neighbors to get on this thing and to say, we need a bike lane on Jones Lane. You know what I'm saying? But who knows if that'll happen? But that's that's the. It does have that kind of capability of kind of aggregating opinion. Kind of Particularly great assault. Yeah, and like Jamie said, there's a way to monitor it to make sure that it's not spam or um, or that it's just not the same person, you know, posting fifty times. Um, so that that's kind of a, a, a useful tool that we want um, to pull, you know, a, a opinion from. I think it's something that um, will live on past the study. It'll be available on the website, um, and, and I think it's something that uh, you know some towns are doing, but I think Orange Town is kind of. So yeah, so besides that we have the survey, we have social media, and we have this, this interactive map. And we also, um, our business cards are up here with our, our, you know, our office phone number and our, our email addresses. So um, if there's anything, you know, feel free to contact us through that. A question, what's, what's been your experience in enlisting bike shops as a way to raise awareness of the study, 
distribute surveys, get them to put it on their Facebook pages, and so forth? We've, we've had some pretty good support from bike shops with events that we plan, because we also do um, workshops throughout the state to promote bicycle friendliness and the economic impacts of it. And um, bike shops, you know, if a community is more bike friendly, they're going to make more money, you know, likely. Um, so, you know, we've, we've had some pretty good luck working with bike shops and, um, you know, we could definitely, in Troy, we distributed surveys to the local bike rescue um, and they had the surveys available for their members and um, we found it pretty, a, a really good way to, to reach, you know, people who are casual cyclists or might be interested in cycling, but. Um, I think this is neat too because they can just post the link to this thing and you don't have to sit there for it. You can do it on your own time after you get the link or get the poster for it. Is there any help you need on identifying the bike shops and yeah. reaching out to them? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we just had a list of, of manager, mm -hmm. owner, email, phone, um, stuff like that. We're going to send a volunteer on that anyway, but we're trying, we're trying to build up that. Mr. Kaden, if you're interested in visiting those bike shops with me, I'd be happy to go with you. Do I get like a gift card to buy things? Maybe. Knowing <laughs> <laughs> the bike shop you're going to go to, I'm sure it's an eBay credit. <laughs> well, that'd be great. That's you know, there's a variety of ways that, that folks can help. Building that list of involved or concerned businesses. And I think another way that we're that we're uh, relying on on the community for output or for input is, um, you know, through events. There's lots of community events, and so if, you know, like, like I said before, if you're attending those events um, or you're organizing one of those events, um, you know, we can get in contact with you and provide you with information. Um, you know, I believe there's some events coming up in the fall. We've got Aquafest coming in Piermont, and it's great because there's a bike shop there. Pearl there's River Pearl River Day. Day. There's a bike shop in Pearl River, so we get to do a little advanced. Outreach to those two bike shops, make sure that they're on board. So there's an event in Nyack, not this Saturday, but the Saturday upcoming, yeah. the Great Nyack Get Together, which is a, a community event where nonprofits uh, would have a table and could talk about what it is they're doing. Uh, it includes um, every mom and shop nonprofit, including the Bridge People. Um, it might be a good people, to, it, it's not close to Nyack. Um, uh, they're putting a Ferris wheel in the door of the park, which is going to be a big attraction. Um, so it just might be something that you want so to consider. So there was a, a well-known local website writer, <laughs> possibly, who had a table there. You know, you know, maybe we stopped about the survey. Maybe you can you know, give us a little three, sign or something. Three inches by three inches. Up. We'll have to have other be there, but, but yeah, I, 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 that's a good way to to, to reach out. Yeah. So we'll get the details for that event and we can send And we need like a little table card that says, you know, yeah. complete the yeah, bike study survey. Right. Yeah. We do that. Oh, we we could, well you could set up your application. It's free, free for nonprofits. So. Sure. Uh, we, we need to clean up a couple of the old tests we did, we've done, but other than that, yeah, it is pretty close. How are we going to find out when this really and how to get at it? We can, we have, if you sign in tonight with your email, we can certainly this list and give you the yeah, did the sign sheet go around? Yes. Everybody's got their email. And the, the, the information we posted on our, the town's Facebook page, Annie will share it. We'll post it. You know, I can post it online. It'll be in the, the you know, those group pages, Nyack Village page and the Piermont Happenings page and all of those. We'll get it posted in those. There's more copies. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. No, you can't have it. I thought it was circulating. I forgot to pick it up. My bad. Uh, we should mention, so for social media, we're going to use the hashtag Orange Town Bike Study, and then we're going to tag, and we're going to you know, go through the town of Orange Town's Twitter and mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, yeah, and so, um, so kind of moving along in the agenda, the, um, we have three major deliverables that we'll be presenting um, to, the, to the public and um, to the town of Orange Town. Um, the first is our draft plan. So. The stuff that we have on these maps is really just the beginning and, and we'll be, you know, like Jamie mentioned before, we'll be collecting um, a lot of data and getting public feedback and we'll be incorporating that into a draft plan sometime um, late fall towards the end of the year. Um, and then we have a final plan that we'll be presenting um, in April. So between the, the release of the draft plan and the final plan, there'll be multiple opportunities for public feedback um, and comment. It'll be posted on the website. They'll, they'll probably notice in the paper about it. Um, so it won't come out without your, you know, 
the ability for you to, to, to comment on it or, or suggest improvements. Um, and then something that's kind of exciting that we'll be doing um, towards the, the release of the final plan, maybe a little bit after, um, depending on, on the weather this spring, is a demonstration project where, where um, we'll be actually um, creating uh, kind of a, a temporary um, pop-up demonstration for uh, one of the, the, the infrastructure recommendations that we make in the plan. So whether it's a protected bike lane um, with some signage, you know, a buffered bike lane or something that, that um, the plan recommends in a specific part of the town to kind of give um, you know, residents and visitors the opportunity to, to go and experience what we're actually talking about firsthand um, and also to give us feedback on that and say, you know, maybe that wasn't the best idea or that was great, let's do it on all our streets. Um, so that's something that, that we'll be doing and, um, you know, those things happen uh, in communities all across the country and, and New York City is a, you know, a great place that, that's been doing that. Um, they do the, they, you know, they close down, uh, I think it's Broadway. Um, during the spring, um, mm -hmm. they, they do kind of art installations along it. So um, it'll be it'll be exciting, and it'll, it'll be something that that um, hopefully will be um, repeated as the as the plan gets implemented. Um, and so basically, the the next steps that we have for this plan, um, you know, we're going to be releasing this map, and um, you know, for you to spread it around to your peers and to give us some public feedback or to give us some feedback on that. Um, if you know of specific locations, or if you're out on a ride and you notice something, um, we've uh, we we basically we have uh, trail counters installed, um, so we'll be collecting data um, on on local trails uh, for at least a month, and we'll be collecting 24/7. Uh, um, you know, there'll be a counter going around and, and collecting that, and then we'll also be doing sometime ne uh, next week and the following week at 10 locations, um, maybe maybe more. Um, depending on how many volunteers we can get, we'll be doing um, observational counts. So our trail counters, um, they just record the number of users. They don't necessarily differentiate between um, a bicyclist and a pedestrian. So um, we'll be doing observational counts uh, for two hours um, on a weekday and uh, two hours on a weekend at, at these locations to kind of um, give us uh, a better idea of, of uh, the mode split, so if it's you know 40% bicyclists going through the intersection, um, and uh, female, male, um, you know, so it's it's useful information that 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 I think would uh, that the town is definitely interested in having to to justify some of these recommendations that we'll be making, and um, also to create a protocol for future counts to do so, basically to continue to collect data. So. You know, you can do counts before and see, you know, what the levels of bicycling are and, and walking are at certain places. But then, when you build the infrastructure, you want to be able to show that that people are using it. Um, so th those counts, um, Jamie, you want to talk more about those? Here. Um, so we have we have we identified they're on one of your maps, the bike network map. There's little notes. That's kind of our those our idea of where the counts are going to go. Uh, they're mostly are most of them are intersection counts. Two of them are trail counts. Uh, so there'll be a, a volunteer that sits there. With the list. And so yeah, here's the list. We may make a, a couple changes to this uh, still. We've been kind of ongoing discussion. But really what you need to know is if you're interested in doing a count, we could use your help. And it requires basically sitting for two hours on a weekday evening and then sitting for two hours on a um, Saturday or Sunday, noon to two, is that mm -hmm. we did? And um, yeah, noon to two. And we have all the paperwork, is all standard paperwork, and we have a little training uh, PowerPoint. It's a, probably a 20 minute PowerPoint that shows you how to fill in the sheet. So it's relatively straightforward. The other great thing about the counts is, along with some of the other planning we do, it does give the town the kind of information it needs to go after funding and um, to go after additional planning for if you can show that you already have a lot of use on a road. Sometimes that's the data that you need to convince <coughs> other officials or other jurisdictions that they need to do something about a place, you know. Um, so that is a really, and I think it's a great, we're very lucky because next week is, it's the, like, the National Bike Count Week. So everyone around the country kind of identifies this week as, as the best week to count. It's when kids are back from school, people are back from summer vacations, the weather's still nice enough so there's lots of biking. So if you do the count then, you have comparables all around your climate, you know, uh, band at least. Uh, so it's a, 
and then you put it into a national database and it actually helps improve the, um, there's numbers to estimate annual use from these counts. So you're, you know, you're helping everyone else out and you're getting good uh, comparable data too. So it's kind of a win-win. Uh, lucky that we have this time frame. Well, we also still need some volunteers. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many volunteers we have, but some Critical. people have already volunteered. Seven or eight solid people so far. And okay. Which is pretty good, honestly. We, yeah. we do, across the canal, we trail each year, which is a 306-mile trail. We only do like two or three counts. So having eight in your town for a plan is a, would be a pretty large volume of data. So it's a lot of yeah. sites to count at. Yeah. Right. Each site, each, each site only requires one person. Yes, we would love to do the site, the same site. We'd like to do it one week and then do it again in case yes. just weather, you know, whatever. But we'll, we'll take what we can get. Yeah. The same person do it both times or the same site? It might be. It doesn't have to. Be. We don't really care, but it would be great if you could volunteer for I think two hours a weekday and two hours on a weekend at least in the same. Just site. cover the times. Just to, just so we have coverage. Yeah. But it's a, it's a clear enough protocol so that you don't have to worry about a lot of variability. Not a lot of interpretation. So as far as, as far as these, uh, is there a, like a calendar? Do you have times that you know you want to do it, or do, does yeah, the, yes, how many you, you pay for? You sign up for five oh. 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 <laughs> So yeah, so we we have um, we have a, a short like Jamie mentioned, we have a short training webinar that um, is pretty helpful in trying to figure out um, you know what to actually count. And to how to use the how to use the, the paperwork that you use um, to count the people going through the intersection, um, but basically you know it, it's counting people. It's not necessarily counting bicycles, strollers. It's counting the you know the baby in the stroller. Um, so it's really it's it's useful information. And um, I think you know with with them being done all around the country during the same time, it'll also be you know a good opportunity for for Orange Town to have comfort. Data. Since you already did the webinar yesterday for the few that were able to participate, is that something that we can put on the web, or the town website and sort of people can go in and look at it before so, Sunday and say, all right, I'm ready to go out on Sunday. I want to look at it an hour and a half before and make sure I remember or I missed yeah. it and I'd really I really like think, to. Yeah, we can put it up. I think what we need to do is make a grid, though, for next week okay. and then just make sure yeah. people, because you'll you have you pick one weekday. It's either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. You do it in the evening and then you pick one weekend day. So you're measuring for two hours on a weekend evening and two hours on a weekend day. But we should plug in a grid just to make sure we have everyone, and then we can confirm that people know where they're going and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, we can. Put, we have it in PowerPoint. We'll put it in PDF and okay. throw it right up there. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mark had a really good question, but I'm loud, so I'm gonna <laughs> uh, the the times that you're doing surveys are noon and late afternoon. Uh, but our experience with more serious bike riders and bike clubs and stuff, those rides tend to be earlier in the morning and, and, and over by now. Yes, so we, someone brought that up on our, on our training call. So what we'd like to do if we have enough volunteers is on these um, two counts at least, the Piermont count and the 9W toward the Palisades, to do those an additional count at 9 to 11 a.m. Um, on Saturday or Sunday. I think Sunday actually is a higher volume day, they say, but I don't. Either one of them, whichever one you guys think is best. So if we get the volunteers, we can plug in that count and get. You know, the one thing about it is that data, I think, is more readily available because they have these some of these George Washington Bridge counts and stuff, mm -hmm. and they do them, I think, every year now. So we know there's thousands of people that are flooding up that road. When were you guys talking about Strava heat maps before? Yeah. Yeah. So the Strava heat map data, it's very approximate. It's me looking at the Strava heat map and then putting the intense ones on the map. It's really expensive data. It's unbelievably <laughs> expensive data. It's I don't know what they're thinking exactly, but um, because you can look on a map and see where right. I mean, there's a red line. Right? They're it's, thinking they want in tech to spend a lot of money to get. Yeah. Well, um, but I, I think the focus. We know there's people rushing up and down that corridor. The focus is kind of the other part of this of the, okay. of the network and where where people are going. Um, so if we don't if we don't get every bike club, we're not going to get every bike club anyway, honestly. So it's OK. I think we, we'll get a good cross section of the site. So, OK. Um, to what extent, and we're talking a lot about road bikes. We've got the Strava, the mm -hmm. maps, and all that here. To what extent are we thinking about the other constituencies, like 
people who don't use throttle. The particularly the village bicycle people. Yeah. And I'm familiar yeah. with that at night. Yeah. So you know, someone who's riding the church. Yes, that's or, why or kids. That's, right. are, that's why we've got the the, the card survey, the the events. We're trying to get people yeah. who are organizing clubs to participate, and it's exactly the challenge that you. Well, Andy, what I was thinking is like we're sort of selected off of. It seems like science is selected off of the Strava map rather than. Uh -huh. You know, some, some I mean, I'm just thinking of NIAC in particular, so. Some okay. of them we've chosen because we've heard anecdotally that people are riding like the Oak Tree, Oak Tree Road intersection. I personally have seen bikers through there. Um, we mm -hmm. wanted to kind of capture some of the stuff around the Pearl River train station because it's not a well, it's a well-traveled area, but Makes we sense. don't know if it's well-traveled by bicyclists in addition mm -hmm. to pedestrians and vehicles. Um, but we were looking sort of for high-impact areas. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge is to try and find out where the kids are biking, where the families are biking. Yeah, what's your percentage? Mike, Mike, because I think you asked a really good question, Dave and I talked about this before too, is what's the purpose of the count? Are we trying to locate the counts at places where we're likely to get a lot of bicyclists? Or do we include sites that we think are underutilized, but it might be a great place to go, maybe Dave knows a great route, and we want to just know if anybody else know about that. So, so that kind of, like, Understanding what our purpose is. <laughs> is there an expectation that there'll be a sort of a second round account in the spring? Well, that's a, what, you see what I'm saying? So, the, the, can you guys talk a little bit about site selection for accounting? Because sort of, we've got various ways of collecting data. We've got two different kinds of surveys. we got an app where people can plunk down points and comments wherever they want. And then we have this count thing. And the count, it seems to be focused on the main banking routes that we know of. Western Highway, obviously 9W, coming up Sickle Town Road, Straw Town Road. You know, and that's kind of what they've laid out. But maybe we need to think about <coughs> allocating some counting resources in a different way, is kind of what you're saying. But obviously, we can't count in every single street. Right. So, what do you think? Well, you know, actually, what I was thinking about is uh, if you think of Broadway, in Nyack. Just bear in mind, Nyack has its own bike study, so we're not... Yeah, okay, well that's, you know, that's... Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Uh, so we can dedicate it's our resources. Sort of, we can talk about Pearl River, Tapan, Spark okay. Hill, Fine. Orangeburg, but the point being that there are short trip folks who are going hither and yon, and we need to sort of gauge that activity at some point. Yeah, I, well I, just judging from Nyack, I believe that's an important constituency. It's usually now a lot of younger people uh, kids on up. I think there's more younger people on the streets. Right. A on lot the of streets. a lot of you know, yeah. They're not serious. They're not what we would call yeah. serious bikers at all. Right. But they are a part of our world and an important. Part Absolutely. You know, from the very beginning, when we started talking about this, we've had these conversations internally. It's like we don't want our thinking about the study to be driven by the highly visible, you know, you know, sort of serious long distance bike phenomena, which is really important to understand. We don't want to forget about this little bit harder to track, but a very important yeah, element. And I don't, I don't, I wanted to sort of hear you guys talk a little bit about that. Well, I think a little, a little bit of this was dictated by, so there's a number of north-south routes that we're asked to look at, and then there's a num fewer number of east, longer mm -hmm. east-west routes. So if you look at, eventually you're going to have to propose facilities or routes. There's, only, there's a limited number of, of, of places where you're going to go, so you at least want to count a decent number of them. So you mentioned village centers, you know. So we have Pearl River, the train station is basically the village center there. Tapan, um, we, we have a count right out here, which is kind of Orangeburg. Yep, uh, so much that way. Yeah. And then Spark Hill, we have a count on the rail trail downtown there. So I think we're covering those downtown areas and then like, Convent Sickle Town, which is a big east-west, is one that we was the east-west that we were going to count, and then we had a couple north-south. So I, I don't know that we're getting everything. And the count includes a judgment about the youthfulness or age at some level, like 
or not? No, it doesn't ask for. It doesn't ask. But, but you can like. Be, are they wearing lycra or not? <laughs> no, no. No, no. no, 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 no but I think. I think part of it too is that this is sort of a first. Because we want to know something about the the rambly little short trip. You're, you're looking for a qualitative aspect to the quantitative count. Well, well, but I think we are going I mean, there are people riding big wheels and, and things with tassels on the handles, and then there are people who are like super But also you have the yeah. utility cycles, where are big, big restaurants and, and bars located. You've got downtown Pearl Rivers, you've got where else in, in town? Because that's where you've got so earlier today at the meeting with the agency, Stefan Muno was, was speaking as a parent about the routes that he takes his kids on yeah. through kind of the back streets of Pearl River. We don't, if I don't bike in Pearl River, I don't know that yeah. somebody else has taken those back streets. Right. So I think we have to kind of, we have to utilize our resources wisely, so we know that we have a limited number of volunteers and a limited time frame to start. We look at the places where we know there is a potential for a good number to be counted, and then we get the anecdotal information to find out where people are riding their bikes to parks, to stores, through using the back roads, through the parking lots of, of the schools or wherever, and then we figure out a way to, uh, to count later on those locations, or we you know, we get additional volunteers to maybe do some additional surveying, like we're going to be out, um, you know, in, in April and say, we're going to kind of take a look at the general vicinity around Pearl River Middle School and Pearl River High School and see how many kids are really out and about riding their bikes or how many families are out riding their bikes, things like that. And the more we, we publicize the fact that we're doing all of this, I think we'll get more feedback and we'll be able to, again, it's about using your resources wisely. If we could go to every single intersection, I, I certainly would be happy with that. Yeah. I just don't think we have the, the, well, we're the, the, county the roads manpower. We're going to be mostly counting serious bicycles, yeah. probably. But the, the survey But there are families that use the trail. The, 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 the Esposito trail. Yeah. Well, that'll get all that'll ca people. That's not going to capture a lot of road bikes. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. that's, that's, that's going to capture a lot of people going to work at night, riding on that, and that will be captured. Oh, interesting. Right, so, Claus Line Mountain Road, I mean, you'll get some serious bikers. Do, do younger families not so much? No, no, no. never. Well, we know King's Highway and, we know King's Highway and Japan and Orangeburg is a route that bicyclists use. That's not really on the list. Um, I can verify that. I've been yeah. working out in front of my house the last month, and I was sure. amazed how many people use King's Highway, but uh, who knew? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we know we know that that Louis Louis Ice Cream Shop on uh, Western Highway across from Blauvelt Lions Park and right near the library. We know that that's kind of a little bit of a hub. It's also related right. to the rail trail, so that's a location. So is that is that one is that on here? It should be. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I have uh, a, an, an offer of information, and then something you got to change. Uh, the offer of information is uh, uh, the Nyack School District uh, through Safe Roads to School Money. Uh, was doing a survey. Um, I was getting results from them last year. I don't know if the grant ran, ran out, but you, you might want to contact them, and I can give you the, the name of the, the, the communications person. Uh, it's not a great survey, but I do know that they were doing it just among elementary school and middle school, and they had a couple years worth of data. Um, I was looking at that to uh, try to justify because there just aren't enough kids riding to school because lots of things. Uh, so that might, might be one source for you. Um, the second thing, and again, this is Mark's idea, but I'm going to take it. Um, you have three yellow note tabs on this uh, north north route, uh, which appear to be on uh, uh, on your on your map for nine W. The bike network map. Bike network map. The one that I stole from the gentleman in front of me. Yes. Right, let, let me uh, I'll explain. Uh, so one of them is actually supposed to be on the Trail. Okay. Yeah. One of them is supposed to be on 9W proper. Yes. And then one of them is Piermont and Ash. Okay. Which is the bike route. Okay. The actual state bike. Okay. Route. We're happy now. Okay. <laughs> right. The the 9W thing is if you see anyone who's biking there and they're going slow enough, you should tell them they don't belong there because they, their life is threatened. Right. Yeah. Well, nobody belongs. But, but 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 that be, I mean we're but clubs do that and so that's a whole separate issue. But. Um, 
most of the traffic in my experience and every ride I've ever led is going to be on River Road, Piermont Road. Yeah. Um, it's problematic for a lot of reasons, but it's certainly much better than um, 9W. Yeah, right. That's, 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 that's important. important. I agree. That's, I think that's really important. I yeah. like to jump so, so, in. Because I bring 9W in other grandeur, let's call it, no one should be biking right. in the current states. I thought the town had already gotten money to fix where there was a fatality at Greenbush Road and 303. That's great. The so that's not, we're not talking about 9W, we're talking about 303. Yeah. Sorry, so, 303 and Rainbow Road. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so talking about 303. Valentine. Right. 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 So, so, so the plan on that, just to... I thought it was already funded. So I'll describe it to you, okay? <laughs> um, we have a funded design in almost under construction little uh, bike road. Bypass. Bypass, mm -hmm. which will enable people who are using Greenbush Road not to go on 303. Mm -hmm. So when you come out and log on by Valentine. And that's just something that's under pressure in the pipeline. You can assume it's going to happen. Uh, oh, I, I can. Sorry, I need a bit better than that. <laughs> well, what, what do you when? want? There? I mean, it's funded. Oh, when? It's so it was funded three, three years ago? No, it wasn't funded three years ago. And there's a grant when process. There's a grant process that we're following. When was so it funded? Was it, the application was approved. The money hasn't been received yet. So first of all, it's a reimbursable project. Second of all, there's a lot of paperwork that the, that the state had to uh, approve. We had to get a license agreement with the Palisades Interstate Park Commission. That was because it's, a st this, it's state land That's that we're trying to build on. That took a little bit of negotiating. It took a little while. So while it's, it's, it's moving slowly, it's moving. So we're hoping that construction will start in the spring. Can I make a suggestion off of Dave's I'm not like the official, but trust me, it's mind numbing. It's, it's yeah, I, I, I trust. We're in process as well. Yeah, no, I, I've been working with the stuff. That no, we all want to make your brain We do. Work. It's it's a top priority in our office for sure. So what what Dave said in the course of his comment was students. Um, in terms of access to volunteers, have you thought about going to the high school? It's an interesting project for some high school students. Yeah, we had a high school teacher today at three o'clock. Yeah. We're also going to reach out to the Leos Club. Mm -hmm. and have to say they have a bunch of kids. Yeah, the clubs haven't really started meeting yet. Yeah. We don't really need that many volunteers. To do 10 or 12 or 13 right. sites takes right. that many people. Right, but they have all the community service hours there. They, they know. <laughs> Absolutely. So, unfortunately, it's, it's not a huge volunteer demand. Obviously, the problem with getting the kids, though, is it was only the first couple of days of school, yeah. and so right. we have, there's not that connection yet with the clubs. The clubs haven't really started to meet yet. So they're, they're starting their initial officers are meeting, yep. and so this is certainly the time to, to reach out to them. These follow-ups into the less obvious areas, yes. Yes. That, you, yeah. could need, you could need 20 volunteers. Yes, right? absolutely. Right. absolutely. Exactly. As we go through, players, to that was, we discussed that today, too. Is this the only week for collecting data? And no, the answer is not this is the only week. We're going to be looking at other opportunities for collecting data as long as there's nice weather. I mean, you know, fall riding is probably a prime time as long as it's still halfway decent out. So if we can get the, the student volunteers especially and other volunteers to help continue the counting in other places, absolutely. This is just the very, for this week. And just another thing is, uh, it, it, so kind of zooming back a little bit, but the, so the NACTO guidelines actually, they're kind of, they're progressive in that, you know, you could put down, um, you know, something that's kind of minimal, it doesn't necessarily affect the flow of vehicle traffic, but really helps bicyclists in a big way. Um, so you can do things like that, or you can do a protected bike lane um, and take a lane of traffic. So there are, there's different levels of, of intervention that you can do to make a street bicycle friendly. So we'll be looking at all of those. So um, it's kind of another way to, to basically make it so that um, you know, just because an intersection isn't really showing high usage with bicyclists, it could also be a, you know, you could do something and, and could install a bike lane and then people would, would be using it more. So this is definitely a learning process for, for, for everyone in terms of getting, getting the data to do this plan. Okay, any other comments or questions you guys are great group and there's so much experience here. There's something that's not great that you said in your goals, kicking off, uh, and I, and I read people's perceptions and how they do the network. Um, and I think reading between the lines that uh, friction, hostility, misunderstanding, uh, but you know, we have a little bit of that around here. 
Um, tell me what your experience is in other places and how you collect that and how you address those things. Well, we we do for the we uh, we do a lot of surveys along the Erie Canal Trail, um, and those communities are kind of in a different situation than Orange Town. A lot of those communities they they relied on manufacturing in the canal, and when that left, um, they their economy kind of bottomed out, and now they're really seeing a resurgence based on you know tourism and the Kanawha Trail going through their communities. So those communities have very positive look. They see it as something that's very positive, and, and we've been going around to those communities for for at least five or six years, um, doing uh, workshops and helping those communities take advantage of, of cyclists and becoming more bike friendly. Um, and you know we definitely seen communities you know around Albany and around other parts of the state where there are bigger bigger cities um, where there are. You know, there's limited road space, and, and um, especially with trails, a lot of people, you know, view trails negatively. Um, but once it's built, you know, people, especially with trails, once the trail is built, people love it, and they, yeah. and um, oftentimes the people who were um, vocal um, opponents to the trail um, because it, it runs near their property are are grateful that they now have a place that they can go off road to, to go for a walk or go for a bike ride. So um, it's kind of mixed, and, and I think. Um, we definitely have experience dealing with um, differing opinions and kind of trying to serve as a mediator. And so we hope that you know if those those issues come up, that we can you know, use that expertise. I don't think we've dealt with <clears throat> this is a pretty unique case. This high, too much cycling is a very interesting problem, right? Yeah. And we're trying to view it as not a problem. Uh, what we're trying to say, we're trying to, and we're not. I don't think we've been retained to. Rain in or disciplined cyclists, that's not exactly our, our job. Our job is to look at it as a network and a community and say, how do we get it working together and, and put the facilities down that make whoever, we assume most cyclists want to bike right, follow the rules, and we assume most drivers want to respect cyclists right to the road too. So, and that, so how to facilitate that is, is the view we take. Um, we so also want to make it. We also want to make it more convenient and, and more comfortable for people who aren't out there riding, and make it so that it's an option for them. And, um, you know, people who might, might be a little bit more afraid to cross a major intersection to feel like they can safely get around their town without feeling that they're going to get hit or or honked at. And I should just say also that we drove around today and saw a lot of opportunity for that, even with that not not huge dollar amount type of facilities here. Like, in a lot of ways, if you know that, you know, to, to Pan to Spark Hill is three miles, like, I can ride down that road and I can go to the cafe down there and I'm a new biker and I bought my bike and I got my helmet and I know there's going to be signage and I'm not going to get lost. You ne ne don't necessarily need a huge Great Wall of China separating you from the road. You just need to know that that's where I got to go and that's, and I'm not going to get lost. So there's different there's, and there's that opportunity here because you have these nice downtowns that are pretty close together and, and really could be quite likable and well connected. So, it's, so one of the things that I think you got to do is uh, spend some time hanging out in downtown Piermont. Certainly talk to the police department. Uh, if you want to do a walk around, Paul or I or other people would be happy to do that. But there's a lot of, to a lot of people in Piermont, cyclists are like Obamacare. Whatever the problem is, you really have not an Obamacare. And I'm kind of kidding, but there are times that uh, people have just yelled at me because I'm there. And I lead a safe ride, we're doing everything we're supposed to, but just seeing anybody on a bike from some of the residents creates negative feelings. Now, I don't expect you guys to solve that. This is our problem to solve. But the reason I think it's important that you get a grip on it is you can write all the great plans in the world, but if we can't move it past NIMBY kind of negative, you know, th there are people who do not uh, support the expression share the road. Let's put it that simply. And uh, the space that we're talking about on this map, the north-south route between Piermont and, and South Nyack, let's say, is a major choke point because there are only three ways to go north-south on the east side of the county, and that's 9W, which we've already talked about. There's the rail trail, which is unimproved, and there's a River Road. Um, it's dangerous and contentious now, um, but as we start, you know, the, the sport is increasing in popularity, uh, the 
purposes that you've talked about of just being able to get on your bike and go to this point, those are great, perfect things to do. And the whole bridge thing is going to be transformative. Um, and it's going to be hard. You know, part of the reason that I think that Andy has taken the lead with this stuff and we're trying to do things in NIAC is the expectation that we need to get in front of it now um, and figure out ways to plan this and get state money to help us because not only is it going to be interesting, but uh, in this location that, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Amy. Amy, like Amy was talking about not far from her house, uh, a woman named Janet Martinez, who is the most casual of bikers you can imagine, was hit by a car um, and kind of nothing happened other than the state came through after a lot of screaming and they put up one share of the road sign. Um, so, and, and a lot of it is, is, is a concern that, that I see on social media is every time you put anything about cycling, um, you just get crazy crap. And that reinforces other people to misbehave. So it's going to be hard to move these really great plans forward unless we get some direction or some understanding about what are the best practices in other communities to move these things forward. So I just want to... Dave, uh, you, you made me think of something which I think maybe we can clarify together at some level because I absolutely agree with you in, in, a, in a sort of the epicenter of that kind of cultural clash is pure mind. And, you know, this town does not do or fund or plan road improvements in pure mind. So, so our integration of these different incorporated villages to the extent that they are, you know, it's sort of interesting to kind of think about how much attention to pay to that and sort of what its implications are for the rest of the town. I mean, maybe, maybe that clash is, is going to be there for a long time. Maybe the people will start taking different routes, you know. You get a bypass on Route 303, don't hold your breath, but it's about as done as it can be without being done. Um, you know, and then you get people driving, you know, riding their bikes around the lake like you do and coming over the mountain. You know, we really want to focus on these territories. And I'm, I'm just thinking a little bit about how our attention can be drawn to that kind of juggernaut in Piermont. But I, I, think, though, tell you that I think what Dave's saying, and I agree 100%, is, and I agree with, we're focusing on cultivating the opportunity side. Mm -hmm. that's there is a problem side. There is. Yeah. And, and that's to what say, get support right. for things that, that that are in the purview of cultivating the opportunity with the general, you know, residents who are saying, wait a minute, what about the problem part would be I think a missed opportunity to deal with them comprehensively. It may not be the remit of this particular part of the project, but it's um, it's only going to be more of a problem as the bridge opens up. It's it's. Oh, uh, I agree with you. Yeah. 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 Just think a little bit about like like these guys are going to make recommendations. And part of the way we constructed this is we all there's a lot of interconnected issues we want to address. You know, related to education, and culture, and, um, but part of it is they're going to make recommendations for signs, stripes, bumps, whatever you got, and and they're going to be directed at the Arnstown Highway Department. In town board, and so to that extent, you know that stuff doesn't affect pyramid right. other than maybe changing some fluid dynamics around the pattern. Um, so that part of it is what it is, um, but it, 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 but we want to be inclusive and try to and try to be informed and knowledgeable for the whole town, which includes pyramid too. Uh, so I so our, our recommendations as far as highway improvements. Are really not include incorporated village area, but our attitude and our involvement, engagement is absolutely town wide. And it may, it may therefore be on us to take it to these mm -hmm. other constituents. Mm -hmm. You talk to Chris Sanders, talk to whoever yeah. the mayor, you know, and think about it in terms of if there are street improvements or specific things. That so I'm going to uh, talk about my great experience as a bike consultant, which comes from going to exactly one seminar with Rita a few years ago. Uh, and I think I only paid attention for like half, half a day. There, but there's one thing I learned, and it's the thing that they talk about the three E's, which are um, engineering, enforcement, and education. Um, enforcement is pretty good in Piermont and South Nyack and Grandview. Um, the uh, engineering part are, is off the table for all of this because you guys are just making recommendations. There's no infrastructure, there's no bike lanes that actually come out of this. But the education part, 
is not, I think it's an issue, and that means that people understand that when a bike goes down the middle of a lane and there are parked cars on the side, you don't hark, honk at them and yell because it's called take the lane and it's like a legal thing and that's actually good practice so you don't get doored. What does dooring mean? Yeah. All those, those kind of things. Um, if you guys come back and report and say there's a lot of misunderstanding and there is justification to do PSAs, education program, whatever it is, and recommend best practices we've seen in other places, that will enable us to go out and grant, get grant money to do that. And the ways that you get the word out are not necessarily limited to the, the political right. and geographic boundaries. And, and it is, it's a regional problem. Yeah. Because Facebook is unfortunately a regional problem. One thing I had to add to that, the other thing we can do is we do have some experience uh, evaluating economic impact of cycling in other places and some numbers that are big and that are well respect or you know legit where we could include some of those or some of that thinking in the way we evaluate the bike network and that I think certainly may affect the way other people in, in the villages might think of of cyclists and, and we can also do that with our survey where we want to ask people what they think, you know, the overall impact of cycling, whether they do it or not, is to the town economically, too. I mean, I think if you don't like it, you still might realize that it does have a benefit. So some of those numbers can help, possibly. Thank you. But in general, back though to three E's, just the state put out a, um, it's called the Pedestrian Safety Action Plan, where the three E's were the main component. So, we, you, there are probably free or easy to obtain materials that could be adapted uh, from the state's plan. And so that should be, that's a good suggestion for sure. And eventually, I think in the third year of the plan, there's funding available for all communities throughout the state. I think they're focusing on priority communities, like five priority communities that have high rates of pedestrian um, fatalities uh, for like the first two years. I think what maybe Dave was saying in part was of our study, our study is in part about making recommendations, but kind of setting ourselves up to be able to raise money through grants to right. do things. And one of the things would be an educational campaign of some kind to address this. You know. I think those are all things, I'm sorry, Andy, that are on the agenda at next week's inaugural New York State Bike Summit. Yeah, yeah. Things that are no, but there's some of the the 15th. Oh, yeah. Anybody go to the bike summit? Mm -hmm. No. I've thought about it, but I haven't done it yet. I'll put it in the pipeline. If it's a big climb, Steve will take it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a big summit, you'll you'll bike it. <laughs> Uh, we should be thinking about wrapping up. Sure, it's yeah. word. So, just to let you know, that there's a map up here if anyone needs to make, like, look at this intersection, that kind of comment there. Our cards are both up here. All these materials, including a link to the survey, link to the online tool, so quick poll stuff, will be on the town's website. It's under the projects section. Projects, Orange Town Bike Study. Why don't we just send everybody whose email we got, we'll send them yeah. a link. Yeah, yeah. Great. And we'll, we'll we'll send you the the webinar uh, yeah, PowerPoint webinar. Thank you. So people we if people want to sign up, um, definitely a few more volunteers. Now I signed up to start the count on Tuesday. Do I need to take off any kind of form to no. make my count sign? No, I have an email. Thank you. So so if we want to volunteer to count and we didn't get to see the <coughs> webinar, tell us what. The next, well, what's the next step? So the next step is probably to take a quick look at the webinar once it's up on the website. And then it kind of gives you a brief overview of the sort of the process of the counting. And then there's some materials, I guess, that they're going to have to download to take with them to the survey. So they have to print something out. Yes. Like have a clip for you. Yes. Basically. Or else come by town hall. And we can have machines. stuff for you in there. And stand at your intersection and you're good to go. Okay. Wear high visibility shirt. <laughs> We, we recommend that you wear name tags. I'm not sure if, if the town's providing those, but... Um, Get one of those yeah. slap them on your yeah. kind of name town. tags. The town had a town hat or something that credentials you. It's not just someone. And then we'll... we'll we have a, like a one-pager <laughs> that we can provide people with, so if someone comes up and is curious about what you're doing and you don't feel necessarily like comfortable talking about it, um, 
from memory, you can just refer to the one pager. If you're raising money for your own cause, just don't tell us. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And there are people I know, like for example, we were talking about a quantum combat.